Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial of our software testing bootcamp where we are looking forward to understand some of the fundamental concepts of software testing. We are in chapter four talking about the test design techniques and uh, continuing ahead with 4.4 experience based uh, techniques. And today we will be talking about another technique under this particular, particular category, which is uh, exploratory testing and uh, trying to understand how this technique is unique of its own kind and why it's so common and popular among test engineers. In order to get started, the very first thing we are trying to understand here is uh, what is this technique all about and then we'll look forward to have the characteristics understanding of the same and uh, try understanding what makes it the best and different from all other. And uh, the very first thing here, exploratory testing is one among those which are informal techniques and uh, generally being applied when you find challenges having the formal requirements documented or uh, you do not have any particular you know set of test cases available or sometime it is pretty much common to go ahead with uh, exploratory and the word pretty clearly tells us the meaning behind it that here we are looking forward to explore a particular functionality and uh, we don't want to be systematic like writing test cases and executing them in order to just limit ourselves uh, to run those defined set of test cases. It could be even possible that when you run uh, short on time you would like to do a better testing compared to writing some formal test cases and executing them and logging the results because it certainly consumes a bit of time of yours when you are in tight schedule you prefer doing exploratory testing. So exploratory testing is uh, quite similar to error guessing in terms of execution. You just have the application where you look forward to explore around and you can also call it as ad hoc testing where you do not have any formal test cases to systematically execute them, but you have set of uh, modules or a particular scenario or a particular use case which you would like to run together and try to see uh, what you can find the best. Sometimes being being asystematic helps you to uh, find more different defects, right? Being oriented all the time may only result into systematic outcomes, uh, sometimes defects, sometimes not. But sometimes being different, see, being asystematic, not following any flow, not following a systematic approach to work on an application could result into finding different defects. And that was the uh, thought process which created this particular technique that, hey, why don't you behave like monkey sometime? And being monkey, you explore uh, anything in such a way that uh, you could figure out, okay, this could also go wrong. And why do we call it as uh, being monkey? Because to a certain extent, exploratory testing is also known as monkey testing. And the reason being called monkey testing is that a monkey doesn't have any kind of objective, any kind of uh, goal why he or she <laughs> jumps from one particular branch to another branch if he has to go from point A to point B. He, he, he just makes it, right? The only objective is to you know follow his exact path throughout the jungle to make sure that <clears throat> uh, it's just fun, right? Traveling uh, from one point to another point. And uh, monkey is another, you know, species which knows the best about different trees in the jungle because uh, jump, while jumping from one branch to another branch, he or she figures out that, uh, you know, which branch or which tree is weaker because the branch would break, <laughs> right? So the point here is that being a monkey sometime, you would look forward to behave unexpectedly different than the systematic approach, which tends to find more different defects than the usual approach. So some of the organizations strictly conducts a round of exploratory on top of formal testing also. Like after performing all your formal test cases, you can just uh, begin your day with a round of exploratory or end your day with a round of exploratory, exploratory testing, uh, you know, just to make sure that there's anything else we can find other than the test cases we have written. So exploratory, uh, to a certain extent, is generally preferred to be a secondary approach to top up with more confidence and more coverage. But at any point, sometime it can become the primary approach where the requirements are unclear, time pressure exists, or the team doesn't even know what is the formal way of writing test cases, then exploratory is very widely used. If I talk about agile, agile is another uh, methodology where 
exploratory is quite widely used because we have poor documentation, we have time pressure because you're working in sprints and you want to do more and more testing within the given timeline what you have. So exploratory is very common. And in fact, to a certain extent, Agile is inherently called as exploratory testing or testing in Agile is exploratory testing. But also we suggest that if I talk about Agile, what if you are doing a lot of exploratory testing, given that you don't have formal requirements, you have high level user stories and you cannot derive your formal test cases out of them, then you can't just log your work saying that uh, in this week, 40 hours of my work was only exploratory testing, right? It doesn't make sense to the client and uh, nobody will approve that this kind of timesheet that you had 40 hours logged for only exploratory testing and you don't have a piece of paper justifying that, right? Because it's documentless. <clears throat> you don't have a test case. You don't have a kind of matrix. We don't have a coverage measurement. So how would you justify what your 40 hours were for? Where did you invest it? How did you do it, right? So we certainly explain or suggest uh, the organizations looking forward to perform a lot of exploratory tests to have some kind of high level test cases defined, which could be used uh, as a kind of reference for traceability and at the same time logging the work, which makes it more auditable, professional, and accountable for the number of hours which we spent. Now, another thing important here to understand that is there Anything uh, we can do to <clears throat> define a timeline, that is that something we can continuously do exploratory testing for entire day, like eight hours? No, there's no point doing exploratory testing for eight hours and there's no such scenario which could last up to eight hours for exploratory testing. It's more about exploring small pieces of specification, a particular use case, which would maximum be uh, lasting up to two hours of time at most, because exploratory is more about random testing. You're not detailing everything. You're randomly just checking few of the critical items or randomly you're testing some of the important features or maybe some happy paths or negative paths and two hours is more than enough. So generally exploratory testing uh, executions are called as time boxed test sessions. Now here, the test session is the execution approach, right? And uh, Talking about the time box, uh, we have a defined timeline for executing each session, each test session, which is between 30 minutes to 120 minutes. Uh, depending on the size of the module, if this module is slow, you have 30 minutes provided for it. And uh, if it is bigger, like the scenario is too complex, you may have 120 minutes, which is two hours of time to explore it. But the point is, uh, even any of the scenarios, uh, we need to you know, provide certain specific information that what this test session is all about. And uh, given that people think exploratory is completely documentless, we generally have some high level document called as test charter. And the test charter is all about uh, having a log sheet which captures the even details, for example, what use case are we exploring? Who is the person performing it? What is the start date? Uh, start time, end time, total duration executed, what module or observations we had, right? So we capture some high level information about each session so that it could be used as a documentation to <clears throat> justify what exactly the person did. And uh, even just like error guessing in case in there are any failures, you would uh, look forward to, you know, write the test case in a formal way. If in case there are failures, you would write the formal test case, lock the defect and track it. So if during exploratory testing, anything fails, we just make it a little formal so that it can be captured and uh, tracked along the way. So exploratory testings are in fact very helpful as we understand from here. And the second important thing is that it is uh, very crucial to apply it effectively. And it could not be just used as a overall approach and whenever whenever you think it is uh, adding any kind of top of value, you do prefer to have them. And also on a serious note, you should have some kind of high level documentation which would make sense uh, in terms of traceability, coverage measurements and documenting the you know log sheets like test charter to make sure that what was the event details and what exactly happened. So with this, you can measure the effectiveness of each exploratory session and further define how frequently this should be conducted and uh, 
you know, performed. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.